Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. CTF retreat underway. Optic TCM. An OG 2 0 up. Of course, Optic Nation earlier in the night 3 0 would TCM and. Yes. Oh, and playing against Ow. TK. I believe that 2 1 down now. I believe so. And uh, that one, it's going to be ON down 8 2 in this uh, Detroit uplink. I will say this, Ben. We've seen TCM play this one already. If they play as slow as they did against ON, against OG, the score will be a lot more lopsided than it was. A little bit unfair. You can't play slow against OG. They will just overrun you. And, you know, some of the mistakes you see with the rotations off spawns, you just won't, can't afford that against them. Obviously, you can't afford it against any of the top teams here in North America, but uh, this one will be tough for them to come back from if they make any of those small mistakes. Hey, Chuck, with the ASM1, gonna fall. Some pressure coming in now on that flag of Opti Gaming. Jud picks it, but Krim doesn't miss a bullet. Picks up the kill, and one more play from TCM roaming around. He falls. Now, this is the play to watch, really. It's gonna be Nade Shot. Going for the overextend, cutting actually back in towards circle. Can be played to his left and his right. Should be able to clean up Jud. Locked down, pulls out, turns around, finds the second. That was Shane, and now Opti Gaming gonna be able to pull this play. No. Oh, no. Going to be shut down. And they're going to be playing from the disadvantageous side. So they really don't need to force a cap right here. You see everybody from TCM rotating back to their base. And I, I don't know. I feel like on this side, you really only need to send two people back. You don't need to send all four. Would have liked to see Shane really you know, overextend. We see Enable do a good job of that on this map. So he overextends, waits in the opposing team's base. His teammates pick up uh, some kills back at the spawn. He's able to pull a flag. Enable, one of the better TTF retreat players, I feel. You, you always seem to make the right decision. Always. It's crazy. Just seems to know exactly where people are going to be at all times. There's Moose now rotating back to his flag. Needs to win the gunfire. Skunk not going to happen, but Skunk does ultimately fall. Flag's been picked up once again. Gunshi trying to pick up the kill. Can't. Crib with the flag now. Realistically, this one player, Nade Shot, just needs to make sure that someone doesn't pull the flag. Can be underneath him. It's Shane. Nade wins the gunfight. 1-0 up the gamer. Yep. Pretty easy flag cap for off the gaming. And, uh, Gonna be TCM pushing straight into the base. Gonna be taken out, but Moose needs to play a lot more aggressive in CTF. We saw it in the ON game. Really, he's just been camping in this base. I think it might be a difference in play style. I mean, do you see, you know, when you were over in Europe, obviously, uh, you know, slower CTF play in general? I or? mean, somewhat. I guess the, the game is so fast that if you still play it as you would Black Ops 2 or MW3, uh, you, you're not gonna get caught out, essentially. That's kind of the play style that's always been in CTF. It's kind of that like slow, methodical, you post up with an AR, you try and spawn trap, lock down certain areas of the map, your SMGs run in and pull the flags. AW's really not like that. It's a completely, completely different, different game. game. Yeah. That was weird. Wishing each other This is creepy now. But uh, TCM needs to get on the board. Uh, going into good side in the second half for OG. They can't afford to give them a lead and good side for second half because this one will be over quick. Play from TCM tracking back. That's Shane. And Shane running the battle again. We saw him do this earlier on. And missing a couple of shots. He's 3 and 11 to start off. He's just trying to find something that'll work. It's so difficult oh, because. No. I mean, he just ran through two players. Yeah. Uh, to run a sub against Optic Gaming it can't be fun. Uh, still, pulling out an AR. But that is not. And then posting up well, on the kind of good side. Because yeah, players. That you get cautious of the scoreboard. I mean, you, just, you don't want to be that guy on your team who's, you know, 3 what, 12. 3 12? <laughs> right. No, I'm just being real. I mean, nobody no, no, wants no. to do that. Uh, no, you try and get as many easy kills as possible. Obviously, uh, picking up Scump or Krim at long range or trying to fight Formal with a sub at range with a uh, submachine gun is not the easiest of tasks. And you're going to see Scump keep that flag alive, I believe, for OG, and he does. Uh, it's not an easy task whatsoever. And I think, uh, you know, coming here today, jet lagged, probably extremely tired. Something Shane does not want to try and do right now at this current moment. Yeah. Just need more kills. Everyone on up to gaming double digits. Jed, the only player, DCM, to hit that. 22 seconds left. Scumpy doing defensive work and going into good side 2-0, Matt. Yeah. This, this is one looks three. Like well, Jerd doesn't have much of an adjustment as a player. Jerd plays a fast-paced style of game already. And he has pretty, you know, good game knowledge. He has pretty good timing. I don't think he's going to be the one that needs to make the adjustment. I think everybody else is going to need to really 
to step uh, step their play style up, you know, get accustomed to the you know, North American style of play. And I think they will. I mean, they're all talented players. Some of the best Europe has to offer. I'll be curious, though, if that's something to leave. I think that'd be cool. Yeah, I think that would be cool as well. I think by the end of the league, this team will be in the upper echelons of teams in the league. I think they'll figure it out. They're too talented. What do you say game. upper echelon? Put, put like some sort of... I, I don't know if they'll be able to contend for a... Top six? Top five? What are we, what are I, we looking at? I think at? they can finish in the top five to six by the end of the league. So no, nothing crazy, but they'll qualify for... I think they'll, I think they'll qualify for the championships. I think, you know, you look at it objectively by then, talent-wise, they, they can have a top, you know, five, six place, and can they upset somebody to make it even further? A hundred percent. We've seen Jerd, uh, you know, have monster games against, you know, top competition. I don't think that's by any strength of imagination that you can't do it again. It's true. And they haven't had time to adjust really at all. This is a oh, tough, right. this is a tough draw for them. I, th that's why early on when we yeah. were kind of talking about it, I was like, well, I don't expect TCM to win a map. They've literally just flown here. They're going right. up against two very tough teams. <laughs> like, the, you don't have that adjustment period. They haven't had that kind of grace period. Yeah, they can afford to make right mistakes. Right, yeah. Yeah. Learn from them, yeah. But Thag will go in. Props to Jerd and the boys over at TCM for managing to get that one. Three and a, three, what, three minutes 50 left? Yeah. So plenty of time in this. So don't write them out just yet. Everyone from Optic overextending. One player going to drop back. Now, Nature, if he wants his gunfight, he'll be able to pull the flag away. He's not going to be able to do so. So formal, really, on the defensive side. Big flag stop on the other side of the map. Moose going to fall, and Formal picks up a simple two-piece. Yeah, nice play by Formal. He's going to have one more, though, to beat, oh. and he's going to be able to pick that one up as well. So, very nice plays out of Formal. And, you know, talk a little bit more about TCM on this night. I mean, you might not agree with me. I think this is a pretty successful night out of them. No sleep, pretty much. Coming straight off the plane, trying to play their elite matches against I OM mean, and OG. I mean, define success in this point. Like, are they going to fe feel it was successful? No, absolutely No, they're not. not but looking at it... From the outside against Owen, you are teeth going super mode in the second half of the hard points from winning that game and Jer dropping near 50. Uh, the SND, you know, you played two 2v2s really poorly. Could have been you no know, 6-4. Then, I mean, you know, those rounds get closer. You don't know decision-making changes and whatnot. And then uh, the CTF, they just played way too slow. But 2-1 isn't crazy. I mean, they changed their play style and they, you know, played a little bit know more how North American players play it, I think that could get, be a lot closer as well. This game, I think, you, know, you look at the S&D, obviously, round 11, that's as close as they can get. The hard point, no, they just were outslayed bad. But I think anybody, I mean, that can happen to anybody. Really they can happen to anybody in SOG. It's not like it's yep. just TCM, it's like anybody. So I think you look at their night as a whole, it's like fairly successful. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're drawing on kind of every positive, which happens, so yeah, I guess, if you look at it like that. I would have liked to see them maybe pick up one map. I think the S&D versus Optic Gaming was, was one really to, to look at. Hardpoint versus Optic Nation, those were the two, and interestingly, they were the two closest ones. You know, we talked about it, if they were going to take them, it would be those, and as expected, they went all the way down to the wire. This, though, still not over, Matt. No, two, and this is still a close one. game. I mean, we're talking like it's over, it's 2-1. Optic just haven't really been controlling that pool side. Really relied on clutch two pieces coming in from the base. And this time that isn't going to happen. Shane's going to pull that flag, and this could be a tight game. Man. If he gets out, if his teammates get these cutoffs mid map, it's going to be in good shape. That battle behind him in the lobby is going to be huge, and it looks like they're going to be able to win that. And it's going to be Jerd with two oh, kills no, and a kill piece. He's going to have one player to beat and oh, get by, he and he it. does. So we're going to have a tie game here, minute 15 seconds left. Let's see if TCM can hold on, force overtime. Picks up one. Formal though replies. Flag has been pulled. And that's going to be three players momentarily down. Moose. Flag character is right. Oh. Didn't know where to look. Players absolutely everyone. Scott replies with a fantastic counter cap. So 56 seconds left. Can TCM return a counter cap of their own? Player's going to be directly above Scumpy. Surely going to see him now. Well, he make cleans him up for him. One more to the right. Easy pickings for Optic Gaming. And Question now, when TCM spawn, do they all just push the overextend? They're going to have to. I mean, at this point, what you need to do as a team is you need to force that overextension. You need to get to the flag. 
And then if OG pulls your flag, you pretty much just need to run it right at him and win that engagement. That's your best chance to win. But 28 seconds left. Uh, it's going to be Gunchy, really. Has one player in front of him on his team. Going to try and make a play here. They're going to need to pick up some kills in the lobby. But on the flip side, it's going to be formal with the flag of TCM. It's going to have players shooting him from behind. It's going to be Shane finishing him off. Going to have one more to beat. Shane's going to be able to get the return. But uh, 10 seconds left. Nobody in position to pull. Last game. Up to gaming. gaming. Yep. Hit the 3 0 win over TCM. So, I mean, you know, you heard Mr. X kind of analyze TCM's first day performance. Definitely. I some, thought it was fairly good. Definitely some benefits and some, some positives that you can draw from it. But by the 2K and 5K, they look them. like a completely different team. Yeah, we'll see them yeah. throughout this week, see if they can improve against uh, maybe, e I won't say easier competition, but other teams. No, I mean, they're going to scrim it's... like mad, and they're going to oh, learn a lot. I mean, lot. of course they're going to scrim like mad, but ultimately the league performance is what everyone's going to be judging them on. Right. So can they manage to pick it up towards the end of the week? Curious to see the 2Ks and 5Ks. Of course, this all really just practice for Clutch Champs. A big learning experience for them until Clutch Champs, and after that, that's when I think you're going to seriously see that grind of, all right, well, Clutch Champs is done. We've right learned now, a lot. I feel like you're almost, it, it's almost, it hasn't hit you that they're in the league yet. Right. At least for me, it, it hasn't hit me that they're, going to be in the league. The league goes all the way through, you know, June, whatnot. Right. Uh, right now, it feels like, okay, they're here for champs. They're playing against some teams we're casting them. But, but then this after is the, champs, it's going to be, okay, they're still here. They, they're they really going to have a lot of time against this, these This teams. is the worry, though. Digging yourself too big of a hole that you can't get out of. If you lose too many games early on, you know, we've, we've seen a lot of times, yes, there have been exceptions to that rule as well, but too big of a they're hole. They're almost going to get a free reset, I feel like, though. They feel like after champs, everybody's going to change teams. So you're going to have Maybe. players just trying to mesh together, new teamwork. I feel like you're almost going to get. Potentially. Potentially. I, I know what you're trying to say. And I don't want to say like free wins, but I want to say like you're going to catch Easier a lot games. of teams. You no, know, right. Trying to figure things out Kinda as like well. Kind of like TK got a little bit. Right. Lucky. Yep. In a, in a sense, obviously, huh. wasn't really just lucky. No, they yeah. Had some skill. But the timing of everything worked out very much in right. my favor to get out of that bottom four. Who knows? We shall see. But that's going to conclude uh, myself and Matt's coverage of the Pro League this evening. We'll be back tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern, mlg.tv forward slash ESR. See you then.